Hello, this is Sam from Sound on Sound magazine. I'm at the NAMM show in Anaheim, California. I'm delighted to be joined by Matt from Roswell Pro Audio. Hey, Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Yep, pretty good so far. First thing in the morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can only go downhill from here. <laughs> but not for you, because you've got a new product. This is the what, Mini K2. K67X. Oh, miss. oh, okay. Mini K67X. Tell us about this. Yeah, so uh, we have a whole series of products called the Mini K series. And the idea of them is they're all small. We use the same microphone body for all of them because it's easy, uh, it's familiar, uh, very easy to position. And the idea of this Mini K product line is that they are what we call point and shoot simple. So there's no switches, there's no learning curve. You set them up and you plug them in and you get great sound. And what's different about them is that they all sound different uh, because the way we think about microphones, it's uh, that they're all kind of a different color. Uh, similar to a painter's palette, it has all kinds of different colors, you know, depending on what needs to be painted. And so you don't, or if you're a guitar player, you probably have more than one guitar and they probably don't all sound different because why would you have you know, four guitars that are exactly the same thing? So uh, microphones are kind of the same. So uh, each one of them sounds different because they bring out different characteristics, different frequency responses, convey different emotions, that sort of thing. And so uh, the new one is the Mini K67X. And uh, in all the cases of all these Mini Ks, they are named for the kind of capsule that's inside. So uh, for those of you who don't know a lot about how condenser mics work, uh, the capsule mostly determines the sound of the mic, the frequency response. Um, and so this is a K67 capsule. Nominally, we've actually tuned it quite a bit differently than your typical K67. Uh, and then the X uh, stands for transformer. And that distinguishes it from the other two Mini-K mics in the series, the Mini-K 47, Mini-K 87, which have no X and they have no transformer. So, uh, so new mic, new capsule, new circuit with a giant transformer. The transformer almost doesn't fit inside here. And in the prototypes, we had to clip the corners off the plastic bobbin just to get the body on. And then we had to figure out, a, we had to machine a thinner uh, shim to mount the thing just to give us the clearance for it. So uh, big up a transformer. Uh, why does anyone care about the transformer is your next question. Uh, My next question <laughs> is, uh, why does anyone care about the transformer? Exactly, thank you for asking, Sam. Uh, so the circuit, you know, the, the transformer is part of the circuit. It's not just something that we glommed on there so we could put an X in the name and say, how's the transformer? Uh, no, the point is the circuit creates harmonics. So if you, if you have an old two mic, right? Old vintage two mics are revered for how they sound. And a lot of words are thrown around to describe that two mic sound like warm and, you know, that means different things to different people. But if you actually analyze the way old two mics sound, there's a couple of characteristics that come out of that. Uh, and one is that they do a little bit of transient compression or sometimes a lot of transient compression, uh, which means when a sharp volume spike comes through, the microphone sort of squashes it, just like a compressor. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, depends on what you're trying to record. Um, and the other thing that two mics do that people know of and recognize and often prefer is they add harmonics. So ideally second harmonics or even order harmonics as opposed to third order. Third order can be out of key and can sound jangly and harsh sometimes, depending on how much there is. Uh, but even order, especially second order, add richness or saturation, which is a very musical effect, uh, which it's hard to get unless you have a plug-in that does it or a preamp that does saturation. And there are some that do that now, or, or if your microphone does it. And so that's the point of the circuit in this mic is very similar to our Kolaris, uh, which is a much bigger mic. And uh, I don't know if you can focus there, but that big mic at the end there is the Kolaris. This mic has a similar circuit to that. And the point of the circuit design is to create those second order harmonics. So that when you, uh, you know, if you're whispering into the mic, it won't push the mic into that sort of harmonic range, that saturation range. But if you're singing a little bit, you know, with more energy, or you've got this on a guitar cabinet or drum overhead, something like that, louder sources, including, you know, louder vocals will push the mic into that saturation range. And so you're getting out some of that richness or warmth or, you know, whatever word you want to use. So is this intended primarily as a vocal mic then? It's not, you know, the entire mini case series, uh, in my mind, as the designer, and it's, you know, it's designers ultimately have no idea how people are going to use the microphones. Uh, but I, I thought of them as the perfect singer songwriter mic. You know, you put it on your guitar, you play some guitar, you record that, you put it on your voice, sing into it, multi track, and you're done. Make a whole song with one mic. Uh, and that's true of all of them. So, what we found since then is, for example, the Mini K47, which I thought would be this perfect vocal and guitar mic, is amazing on piano, it's amazing on drum overheads. People love it on drum room too. Um, and then the, we came out with the Mini K87, which is a much more neutral flat response. So the Mini K47 has that 4K presence bump 
that sort of upper mids push that's really great on guitar cabs as well. Mini K87 is very flat, so for a lot of vocals who don't sound good on the Mini K47, the Mini K87 is magic because some voices, you know, every voice is different. So how is this 67 voiced in comparison with those two? Yeah, so, well, it's, it's sort of inspiration is the U67, the old Neumann tube mic. Uh, this is not a tube mic, not a clone, doesn't pretend to be at all, but we definitely took some ideas from that, meaning the harmonic saturation and the very wide band frequency response. So the U67 had a very wide response, uh, not rolled off crazily on the top and not rolled off crazily on the bottom, you know, which is true of a lot of other mics. Um, but uh, so this one has very wide frequency response and more or less flat. It's in the neighborhood of flat. It's got a little dip around six, seven K, a little bump on top of that, but it's not harsh, not bright, not hyped at all. It's just kind of, it comes across as more rich. So are you doing that by tuning the capsule or are you using a de-emphasis circuit in the actual electronics? There's, that's a great question. Um, no, there's no, there's no EQ in the circuit. Uh, what we've done is come up with a proprietary capsule tuning. Uh, so for those who know about, you know, microphones and capsules or people who have watched me talk about all this stuff online before, they might say, oh, K67 capsule has this giant high frequency peak, 10K is plus four, plus five dB. So you have to roll that off in the circuit. And if it was a U87 sort of mic, then yeah, you would have to do that. But no, we what we did instead was invented a new capsule uh, that doesn't need that. Awesome. So how soon is this going to be on the market? Uh, this mic is shipping now. Wow. And, so, uh, and it comes with our, uh, what we call the cutaway shock mount, which is interesting for a couple of reasons. One is it doesn't use elastic bands because elastic bands, if you can, you know, if you can pluck the, uh, the suspension in your, in your shock mount and it sounds like a bass guitar, <laughs> that's usually a bad thing. Because if you think about it, those bass strings are that far away from the capsule. So if they start to get excited by whatever you're recording, you're gonna hear your shock mount in your music and you can't mix that out later. It's welded into your track. So we don't use elastic. These are non-resonant silicone O-rings. Um, and then the front of the mic is, front of the mount is cut away. So if you wanted to get it up close to a cabinet uh, or on a close mic vocal, you don't have a lot of shock mount stuff hitting you in the face or shoving up against your grill uh, on, your, on your cab. So it comes with all of that and, uh, and it's shipping right now. And what sort of price? Uh, US 479. Wow, very competitive. It is, and I should also mention that we do all the assembly in California. Awesome. So, uh, you know, we, we pick top-notch parts and uh, we show them off on the website. You know, so new old stock, vintage film cap, custom-made high nickel core transformer, individually biased JFET, um, selected for noise and distortion. So, I mean, it's very hands-on. Uh, and again, doing all the assembly in California and. All, all the mics are tested and burned in in my shop. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, hopefully it's a, a interesting product. I think it's going to be a very wonderful. Well, I hope to get our hands on one for review yeah, soon. We can take care of that. Well, excellent. Well, right on. Thanks, Matt. It's been great talking to you. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Have a good show. Thank you.